Her rustic charm attracts over 300,000 visitors annually. Housing an abundance of natural flora and fauna, Pulau Ubin today is home to only 38 residents, a pale comparison to the 1960s, which saw a bustling town of 2,000 people. Long rumoured to be Singapore's dying town, we speak to the islanders of Pulau Ubin to find out more. Sini government tak kasih tu generator, tu payah air tak ada, habis kita sendiri. Nana pakai wheel, nana bawa. Nanti petang angkut start generator itu wheel kembali air sini belakang. No light dah, ya no light, no payah dek. Ah,那人客来到，又坐车就窄了，没有人坐，就坐到现在了。越来越少，早上到现在都没有人坐，我就坐到现在了。越来越少，早上到现在都没有客人来坐车，哪里呀？常常这样的。While the residents enjoy the tranquility of the island, living on Pulau Ubin is a severe problem for an aging population between 54 and 90 years old. The issue became apparent on June 24th this year, where fire broke out at around 9.15pm, but firefighters only got to the island near midnight. While no one was hurt in the incident, the fire affected an area as big as two football fields. Aside from the lack of proper facilities, a resident had voiced that they are simply too old to handle such emergencies. With these problems at hand, what will become of Pulau Ubin? We asked expert Dr. Ho Hua Chu from the Nature Society for his take on the issue. Definitely we need some kind of a commercial services there. And it is better that it's run by the people who are resident there. All right? uh, if these people uh, fade away and there's no younger gener generation they're going to take over, then uh, it becomes well, I mean, the authority may have to sort of make it run the economy on a more commercial, modernised basis, you know, by getting, let's say, uh, entrepreneurs for the main island. As recent as October 2015, anthropologist Dr Vivian Wee has discovered hubs of economic activity and vast social networks within and beyond the Pulau Ubin Island. She said this puts to rest the assumption that the island is a dying town. Through her research, Dr. Wee identified that the islanders have established links with people beyond the island, such as former residents, heritage, nature and sports interest groups who have ties to the island. Currently, the Ministry of National Development is working in partnership with the community and other government agencies on how best to preserve the island's rustic charm, biodiversity and heritage. But to do that, I think they have to sort of uh, keep you being as it is, all right? With its rustic charm, its ruggedness, and also uh, the rich natural habitat you have there, the biodiversity and so on. Otherwise, I think, uh, you know, this kind of appeal will be lost. Pulau Ubin is now one of the last areas in Singapore that has been left untouched from urban development, concrete buildings and tarmac roads. What will become of the future of Pulau Ubin? While many of the residents here would never trade the tranquil kampong life of Ubin for mainland Singapore, the younger generation has moved to the main island for better education and employment opportunities. Sustaining the island requires more than just keeping it in its rustic state. But if political will and civil society initiatives work together, the kampong spirit of the island will be able to live on with modern Singapore.